With the banning of QAnon content off of platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and the policing of it on YouTube, a lot of very clever, well, conspiracy theorists are going to gab. This made me and a friend of mine dig out an old script from 2018 about the platform in the first place and why it's ultimately doomed. What is Gab? A supposed Twitter alternative? Why does it harbor such strange people? Is this premise very similar to a video Dan Olson has already made? With regards to that last question, hopefully we answer enough different questions that there is a reason to make this endeavor in the first place. Even if there isn't, let's do it anyways! Chapter 1 WHY DO PLATFORMS CENSOR ME?! Before we talk about anything else, we need to talk about why people are being removed from Twitter in the first place. First of all, let's get rid of the obvious examples. Promoting terrorism, sharing illegal content, or creating spam bots that follow loads of people automatically. In order to understand why platforms like Twitter or YouTube remove as much controversial content as they do, it's important to understand how Twitter, say, even works. So let's dive deep into the inner workings of the internet's greatest, biggest platforms. Twitter, like pretty much all major social media corporations, is first and foremost an ad-based company. Which means that pleasing advertisers is on top of their priorities. And you know what doesn't please advertisers? That's right! Controversy. Controversy causes instability, and instability causes economic insecurity. That's why you haven't been able to say the word fuck on television for over a hundred years. How old is television? People have tough feelings about controversy, but rarely uncontroversy. So being uncontroversial is the safest bet for wide-reaching platforms. But just as an addendum, some companies sometimes do create their own controversies, but it's important to remember that they and their shareholders in these situations are in control, and all risks are often calculated for those controversies. I know having to explain that might seem condescending and smug, but remember, these are gabbers we're talking about. No shit, they call themselves gabbers. For any platform the size of Twitter or YouTube, you'll have to employ some level of automation to keep your platform running. It is simply impossible to have humans look at all the 500 hours of footage posted to YouTube a minute. And even if it was possible, it'd be expensive to pay all those employees, and potentially psychologically distressing. We shouldn't force anyone to manually sift through the worst drivel of the internet. No! Twitter is using communist tactics by censoring anyone to the right of Biden, that damned communist. Is that so? Most of left Twitter has been hit by the Twitter banhammer too. I will never forget the Antifa Super Soldiers incident where several leftist Twitter accounts, including popular Twitter user Crank T. Nelson, got either temporarily or permanently suspended for jokingly tweeting about Antifa super soldiers back in 2017. Twitter doesn't discriminate based on political views. Judging by my observations, it has a giant list of naughty words, and whoever yells them too loudly gets hit with the hammer. This was simply just a case back in 2017. There are probably way more relevant cases now, but it was just a very prominent and memorable one. This keeps Twitter relatively controversy clean, at least in theory, doesn't require loads of employees, and keeps advertisers happy. But Sonya, Gab doesn't use advertising, it works on a subscription basis, you Oh thank you, Groyper Straw. That's an amazing transition to the next chapter. Chapter 2. Shitty People, Shitty Platform. Papa John's. The day of reckoning will come. What did he know? What did he know? Gab is a shitty platform in more ways than one, though this shittiness shows itself mainly in three different ways. The community, the concept, and the execution. First of all, the community is toxic to the core. This is to be expected though. Gab is made up of people 
too toxic to be on Twitter. This community will limit the growth and appeal of Gab by making everything the user sees upon entry either stupid and dangerous conspiracy theories, see QAnon, anti-Semitism, and or a bunch of other crap. This community, however, is embraced by Gab's developers, enticing even more shitty people to join the community. Gab is not just a smelly piece of shit attracting flies. It's a smelly piece of shit being sprayed with butric acid and liquid hatred by its developers continuously. This is not just idle speculation. Other than it being totally obvious, it has happened before on a bunch of other platforms. One in particular considered itself the next step in social news aggregation. Join me, my children, for a story of hope, a story of wonder, the story of the late Vote.co. It all began back in the ancient times of 2015, when Reddit banned the subreddit r slash fat people hate. Almost in an instance, the cries of righteous edgelords spread around the globe with righteous fury. They just wanted to bully fat people in peace. And now they were the victims of censorship. And now we're the most depressed groups in society. Banished to walk the desert, they started losing hope until a few hours later, a shining beacon on a hill appeared. Vote.co It reminded people of back when Reddit's predecessor, Dig, lost its popularity to Reddit after a particularly bad update to the site. And now it was destined to happen again. Vote was going to be everything Reddit was always meant to be, featuring all the free speech you could ever need. It was going to be a paradise for the people over on r slash fat people hate, who happily continued their noble quest of making themselves look like the world's biggest assholes, knowing that soon the entirety of Reddit would soon follow. And they waited. And waited. And waited. And, hmm. Where, where is everybody? As it turns out, people who were outraged over fat people hate being shut down were just a tiny minority of Reddit's community. Hell, most of them probably just went to the still online near identical R fat logic. The shining beacon's light was fading. Most people chose to leave. A minority went deeper into the building and congregated to coddle the remaining embers, keeping the beam alive. They were not seen again. This is an allegory for radicalization. Vote quickly lost the spike in popularity it had initially gained. Today, it's exactly what you'd expect a site made up of people who used to be subscribed to Fat People Hate Wooden Tail. And then, now, a uh, recent update. It's, uh, it's gone. It, it's, it's fucking gone. What the people of Vote failed to realize was that for a site to be as big as Reddit, content moderation was inevitable. To be a top 100 site in the world, you need server space. You buy server space with money. Now, who will give you said money? Advertisers? Why would advertisers come near your hate-filled site? Vote is dead now. Wonder why? Another new Twitter clone, Parler, has seen similar issues. For now, it runs because of gracious angel investors like Dan Bongino? Dan Bongino. Dan Bongino. But there's not a lot of faith the site will ever make a buck on advertising. Major social media sites are already seeing boycotts. Do you really think they will advertise on what's essentially alt-light Twitter? No, the advertising model will clearly not work for our free speech sites. We will be too dependent on advertisers. There has to be another way. The subscription model. Other free speech sites have experimented with the subscription model, so their platforms would not be dependent on advertisers. Let's start with the OG, Minds.com. Minds claims to be a revolutionary, decentralized, and transparent social media site that pays you for your activity in this magical cryptocurrency called Minds Tokens. These Minds Tokens can be used to boost your posts, to advertise to other Minds users, 
Or you can tip other Minds users you like. How cool. But how do they keep the servers running? Oh, you can pay five bucks a month to get the premium version. And the premium version will give you the ability to block other users' boosts! <laughs> <laughs> well, if that isn't decentralized, I don't know what is. Pay us money to keep our servers running. Also, the main thing that's supposed to attract you to the site? Well, fuck you! Because now our very active paying users will not have to watch your shitty boosts. Mines has mostly become irrelevant, seeing almost no use. Tim Pool, for some reason, keeps pushing his mind slow. And at last, we return to Gab. The site with probably the silliest premium features, which, back in the day, included the amazing ability to get verified, use lists, and write in bold and cursive. That could easily be bypassed by one of those fancy text generators, but it was a nice gesture. This is a prime example of why subscription models for these sites are terrible. Gab already has worse functionality than Twitter, but because of the subscription model, it is also forced to hide parts of its services behind a paywall, making the entire service even worse than Twitter unless you're willing to pay, leaving the platform even less enticing to go to and more prone to falling into an echo chamber. Gab over the years seems to have caught up on that this is both bad business and makes them look silly. So now in the year 2020, clicking the Gab Pro button takes you to their merchandise site, where you can pick up your very own black t-shirt with a golden G on it for $72? <laughs> Addendum. The fucking bastards changed it back. Gab Pro is back, and nearly all its features are the same old terrible ones that are already free on Twitter. It took me a while to be able to click on Gab Pro, though, as the button is on the bottom of the page. This should be easy enough, but once you scroll down to the bottom, a new page loads. <laughs> Gab only wants users with the fastest reflexes to pay money to them, apparently. That explains the massive sums of money they asked for. You can pay $500 for Lifetime Gab Pro. That might sound like a lot, but don't worry. Gab founder Andrew Torba <laughs> ensures you <laughs> that it's worth $4,500. Dang! <laughs> what a steal, Andrew! If you're watching this, Gab Pro linking to your merch store had a certain panache. It had gusto. It, this is just boring and bad. Anyhow, addendum over. To conclude, there is a reason censorship and advertising is needed for a site to grow big. Advertising has proven to be the best moneymaker for websites since a site can offer full functionality without hiding any features behind a paywall. Censoring content unsuitable for said advertisers is inevitable if a site wants to do a capitalism and make profits. Capitalism? I was suspended from Twitter because of its communist censorship. This is the only place I'm allowed to be. Yes, but that's the point. No one else cares except those who were suspended from Twitter. There is a fundamental flaw in creating a platform based on free speech, or to be more precise, accepting Twitter's outcasts. You will always end up with a platform consisting of a bunch of people that were too shitty to be accepted on mainstream sites. A platform like Gab will simply never take over a social media giant like Twitter. Twitter appeals to a much broader demographic a lot of whom don't have any interest in politics. Many only join the site to stay connected with friends, tweet pictures of cute animals, or follow their favorite celebrities. Also, as mentioned earlier, the fact that Gab works on a subscription basis only exacerbates how much of an echo chamber it is, since only the people who really like the site bother to support it financially. It creates a divide between paying users and everyone else that 
just lacks a bunch of important features like creating group chats, bookmarking tweet, no, gaps, and even the ability to get verified. This creates a smaller minority within the already small minority that use the site that are quite literally invested in it. The walls of the echo chamber grow ever thicker. Gab itself might say that it's not trying to become the next Twitter. It instead believes that the internet will be dividing itself up into smaller and smaller sub-communities, which I can agree with to at least some extent. Except that's already happened on Twitter. Twitter already allows for users to enter small, well-defined echo chambers, giving them tools to phase out content they don't want to see. If Twitter already allows functionally the same thing as what you're doing, you're not innovating. You're copying. And oh boy, you did a shitty job at copying Twitter. From a technical perspective, Gab is fucking awful. It looks bad, and it lacks features, and it can be, or at least previously could be, literally shut down by following too many accounts. All of this can be yours for only $7.99 a month. This will bring the normies right to your doorstep. Gab is a badly made platform based on a bad concept, populated by bad people, and it wants you to pay money for it. Every. Fucking. Month. <laughs> the fact that Gab can't advertise on a big level means they have to advertise on a small level. Which means advertising directly to the people who are the most interested in the site. The toxic fucks who feel their free speech is being restricted. This results in the fact that to keep your site running in the short term, you need to advertise to people who will kill your platform in the long run. This creates a cycle of sorts where you need capital to advertise your site to a mass audience, but are unable to do so due to a lack of capital. Which means you will not have a massive audience, which means you will never have the capital to advertise your site to get a massive audience. Chapter 3. The Gab About QAnon So, what is QAnon? This is a rhetorical device because you probably already know about QAnon. And if you don't, I envy you. You already watched that Dan Olson video or you listened to QAnon Anonymous. If you don't, you might want to after this or before. It's up to your discretion. But in brief summary, as we said in the intro, QAnon has finally gotten the ban hammer from social media two years after such a ban would have been at all useful. So they're on Exodus, but unlike leaving the Red Sea, the water will be fractured instead of split cleanly in half. I don't know biblical references that well. All the small alt sites will be receiving a slice of the QAnon community. QAnon is popping up on Parler, BitChute, Gab, and The Late Vote. While I've arbitrarily focused on Gab, all of these sites are terrible. Gab is just the funniest and most volatile. This splitting up of the QAnon community will be both very interesting and very scary to observe. As talked about prior, alt sites are mainly populated by the most bottom of the barrel rejects of Twitter, which makes them not very attractive to normies. This in effect will mean that fewer, more radicalized QAnon followers will sit stewing in an ever narrowing echo chamber while the rest of us wait for the broth to boil over. Not only will this happen on Gab, but it will happen on the other sites as well, as the loud minority push out the moderates that move back to the main site, and poof, we now have four different denominations of QAnon. The Great QAnon Reformation, if you will. To conclude, conservatives are not being censored off of Twitter, and Gab's failure to grab hold of the conservative community is proof of this. If conservatives really were censored, you would see them flock to new platforms. This is, however, not happening. Only the people too extreme for Twitter were banned. These platforms are pressure valves conservatives can and have 
used to pressure social media giants to cater to their demands, like changing algorithms to benefit conservative content. Conservatives don't want to move away from these sites. They are in large part in control and would like to entrench themselves quite literally into the code. Gab's obscurity should not mean that we should just throw it into the dustbin of things to laugh at. Sites like Gab can foster dangerous political tendencies. And the response to the election of Joe Biden, the denial of it all, turns the heat of these sites up to 11. Which, as mentioned prior, will make this even less appealing to normies. Also, why do you think every major content creator that went to Gab is hardly even active or just reposting stuff from their Twitter? Again, these people were banned off of Twitter for being too toxic. It's not a stretch to conclude they liked Twitter because, well, they loved owning the fuck out of the libs. But on Gab, there's a significant shortage of libs. In its eternal goal of pwning all the libs, the endangered edgelordius Maximus will always search for waters rich in libs. This means they will go back to Twitter eventually for the simple reason that Twitter provides you with the most libs to own as possible. This is known as the network effect. I brought it up earlier, and it's something I want to expand on together with a lot of other points on the futility of challenging these larger platforms through the free market. See you in part two. I'd like to thank all my patrons who have stayed with me throughout my whole fucking year and a half of being gone. Um, the Marvel video is coming. I've been trying to fight copyright bullshit on that. So I think I'm just going to record myself doing my, my stuff for that and then have the footage in the corner for that. Um, instead of like risking having the footage be on screen and getting copyright struck for that because fair use is not considered on this site. Um, part two will come pretty soon and the Marvel video will come before that. And then also I have a video I'm working on about surviving edged weapons and cop brain. So expect those coming 2021. Thank you for sticking around on my channel, and I bet you didn't expect this on New Year's Eve. I'm gonna steal Bad Mouse's sign off. Stay classless.